Welcome to Ben's TV. I'm Shante Lively, and this is Ben's Bites. And today I'll be biting into Georgia's rivers. A physiographic region is a large portion of land defined by its distinct geology, the rocks underneath the soil. Topography, hills, valleys, and flat spots, communities of native plants and animals, and of course, history. Georgia has five main physiographic regions. They include the Appalachian Plateau, the Ridge and Valley, the Blue Ridge Mountains, the Coastal Plain, where my previous Bims Bites episodes on Georgia focused on, and the Piedmont region. In this video, we are focusing on the Piedmont region. This is a region found not only in Georgia, but also four other southeastern states. There are six characteristics that make this region so special. It's the central region of Georgia, home of Atlanta, our capital. You'll be able to find rolling hills, shallow valleys, eroded mountain chains, and that famous Georgia red clay. Do you know your watershed address? Georgia has 70,150 miles of rivers and streams that wind their way across the state. Nearly half lead to the coast in the Atlantic Ocean, while the other half goes into the Gulf of Mexico. A river basin is a portion of land drained by a river and its tributaries, while a watershed is a smaller version of it. Georgia's rivers are divided into 14 major river basins and further broken into 52 watersheds. And in the Piedmont region, our region sits at the headquarters of six major river basins. Additionally, we're located on the continental divide, which means that a portion of the surface water flowing through our region empties into the Gulf of Mexico and the other portion empties into the Atlantic Ocean. Let's go a bit deeper. This is a map of the major rivers in Georgia from geology.com. In our bite today, I am focusing on three major rivers from the Piedmont region. Let's dive into these rivers, starting with the Chattahoochee River. Fast facts about this river. Chattahoochee is said to mean river of painted rock in the language of the indigenous Muscogee or Creek people. Chatta meaning rock and hooch meaning painted or marked. The river is around 434 miles long. It begins as a tiny stream in North Georgia in the Blue Ridge Mountains with an altitude above 3,000 feet. Along the way, the Chattahoochee joins with the Flint River to eventually become the Apicola River, which flows into the Gulf of Mexico. It helps define state boundaries between Alabama and Georgia. 70% of Atlanta's water comes from the Chattahoochee, making it the smallest water source of any metro area in the country. Lastly, it's part of the larger Apicola Chattahoochee Flint River Basin that was under litigation between Georgia, Florida, and Alabama for decades over water usage. So that was an introduction to the Chattahoochee or the Hooch. Back to our major rivers map, next up is the Flint River. Fast facts about this river. The name of the flint is said to refer to the quartz-based rock found along its banks, an English translation of the flint picking place in Muskogee language. This river is 349 miles long, contained entirely within the state of Georgia. With 220 undammed river miles, it is one out of 40 rivers left in the U.S. that flow more than 200 miles unimpeded. Its headquarters is located in Metro Atlanta, starting in Pikes beneath one, of, beneath one of the world's busiest airports, the Hartsfield Jackson. The Flint is one of the most ecologically diverse river basins in the Southeast and part of the top 10 most endangered rivers in America. In the first two decades of the 21st century, it already had five distinct droughts. And like the Chattahoochee, it was part of the larger Apicola Chattahoochee Flint River Basin that was under litigation between Georgia, Florida, and Alabama for decades over water usage. I hope you enjoyed meeting the Flints. 
Lastly, we have the Alkmongi. So fast, back, fast facts about our final river, which is my watershed. Alkmongi means deer trap in Muskogee. Since the steep inclines help to trap deer, it is only 255 miles long, shorter than our other two main Piedmont rivers. Its headquarters, or the Upper Okmulgee, is within the Piedmont region in several metro Atlanta counties. The Okmulgee leads to the Altamaha River, which drains a fourth of the state of Georgia into the Atlantic Ocean, making it one of the three largest river basins on the Atlantic seaboard. If you fall along the river, you'll encounter five major interstates. And lastly, it's the primary drinking source to all or part of three metro Atlanta counties. Now, as marine biologists, we know that science and biology is important, but what about the culture and the average Atlantean connection to the water? Across the South and really worldwide, communities depend on their local rivers for drinking water, economy, recreation, and habitat for organisms. But as Atlanta has grown, so has the pressure placed on our water supply. Atlanta owes its existence to the railroads. The city began as a transportation hub at a high elevation, unlike most other large cities that were built around access to water. We are at the headquarters of six major river basins and three river systems. Representing the smallest watershed, providing a major portion of the water supply for any metro area in the country. More than 99% of our water comes from rivers, streams, and reservoirs, with 72% of it coming from Lake Lanier and the Chattahoochee River. And our soil is a layer of thick granite, so groundwater makes up a very small percentage of the total water supply. So when someone says water is important in Atlanta, it really is. I want to leave you with the words from an organization, Finding the Flint. What happens when a community loses sight of its river? When the streams that feed a river's source are put underground into pipes, does a river disappear? When a cityscape no longer interacts with a river or even acknowledges its presence, does the river just vanish? It is everyone's job to protect our rivers. Each of our individual actions, no matter how seemingly small, collectively make a difference for our rivers and the wildlife that depend on them. There are also several nonprofits, citizen groups, and government agencies that work on dis different aspects of river protection, ranging from education to direct action. Here are just a few organizations you can connect with in Atlanta to learn more about each individual river, visit these rivers, and most importantly, learn how to help protect them as their voice. Thanks so much for watching this Spins Bite on Georgia's Rivers. I hope you enjoyed these videos with me as you got to learn about the amazingness of Georgia ecosystems. Once again, I am Shantae Lively, and feel free to check out my website or reach out to me by email. Please follow, like, and subscribe Black and Marine Science on all their social media handles. And we'll see you soon.